why the name BDXY, where it came from, and uh, tell us a bit about the, the core type of product you guys decided to focus on for, for this particular brand. So the name BDXY came from an idea that I had about not wanting to have a specific name, but maybe a collection of letters that came from words that described something that I thought was universally attractive or that people like to feel these things. And the word, the B and the D came from the word bold and the X and the Y came from the word sexy. And bold and sexy are as much a description of someone or something or, or as, as much as a description as they are a feeling. You can feel bold. Bold is is confidence. Bold is standing strong, standing out, feeling um, independent, feeling you know unique, and sexy. You can feel sexy in so many different ways and so many different things. You know, you can feel sexy completely naked, or you can feel sexy in a tuxedo or a ball gown. Um, but also, it's a it's not just about clothes. It's about a feeling. It's an essence. And I wanted these two words to describe that. And I want when people wear our clothes or, or, or use our products that they would feel these things as much as uh, look good and bold and sexy. Uh, funny, funny thing you're mentioning like the feeling because I know that you guys focused a lot on the way the clothes felt and the touch and the yes. materials and the type of product you put in the brand. Mm. So tell us a bit about what the core products are because yeah. it's mainly staples as I understand. Yes. Yes. And and what you invested in, which I think would be materials. Mm -hmm. Can you discuss yeah. a bit about that? Absolutely. So we um so the the three directors, myself, my partner Fran and our, our friend and stylist and creative director Christopher Brown, we came together and we all had the same idea that we wanted to create a st immense staple collection, things that, you know, we all wear, not just men, women too. Um, everybody wears t-shirts. I mean, I, I look in around the room behind you and there's four people in a t-shirt. You know, it is a staple piece that began many, many decades ago as an undergarment and uh, became a piece of, of, of uniform almost that has lasted timeless, timeless uh, decades, you know, we, we were inspired very much by the a T-shirt that fitted and felt perfect. We were inspired by the uh, old Hollywood classic actors like Marlon Brando, James Dean, uh, Steve McQueen, Robert Redford, Harrison Ford. Um, some of those black and white images that have lasted all this time are them in a T-shirt. And I don't know if anybody else is like me, but I have a 40 t-shirts in my in my in my wardrobe and I always go for the same three t-shirts and I wanted to understand what it was about these three t-shirts they're not the same brand one is very old one is new one is very expensive one is middle of the range but what was it about these three that we all ap appreciated and basically we looked at these and we broke them down we felt them we touched them we we put them on and uh, we basically made a hybrid of these three t-shirts that I, I own and I always wear, not the other 37, but these three. Um, so that's where we started with the Hero product, which is the classic t-shirt, by the way, is what I'm wearing right now. And um, a, a big um, part of making a brand, especially in today's world, is to do it respectfully and to consider you know the the the, the impact on 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 you know recyclable materials you think considering sustainable products sustainable fabrics so we went and learned with like going back to school i'm an actor my partner's a, an architect um chris christopher brown comes from fashion so he had a little knowledge but we all really went and discovered uh, what these new fabrics are made of and, and how are they sustainable and where do they come from. And that's where we started working with these fabrics. And um, we actually live in Lisbon. Uh, we have a home here. And um, we are very aware that a lot of the, the, the this kind of clothing, the, the best people that are making it in the world are the Portuguese. Up in Porto, which is up in the north of the country. And um, so... One rainy October day in 2022, we took a train to Porto and we met many different manufacturers and we went and met and went to their factories and we saw how things were made. We, were, we, we touched the fabrics. We started to get an idea of how 
the grammage of a t-shirt and, and the weight of the t-shirt and what it's and what it's mixed with and the elasticated feel of, of certain um, sustainable fabrics they all differ and we so we we sat and we chatted to all these manufacturers and then the final manufacturer of the day um, was a guy called Miguel who ran a family business his mum opened the business making men's swimwear in the 60s and now they've branched off and they've they, he now runs the business with his sisters so it's a family-run business north of Porto, and we clicked with him straight away. Um, we're a small brand, and he wanted to help us, and he wanted to be part of the, the beginning of something, and he believed in what we were going to do and understood our, our want and need to use sustainable fabrics. And so uh, we found our manufacturer here in Portugal, which was a lovely thing, and um, it's a family-run business, so we feel like we're also supporting a local business um, in the country that we call home. Going back to the materials, the t-shirt is made from a, 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 a fabric called lyocell, which is organically grown wood fibers. So it's recyclable. It can be, you know, um, biodegradable. biodegradable. Yeah. Um, the, the quality of it is uh, the, the assets of, of a lyocell is that it's hypoallergenic, it's very breathable, it actually does not crease. I mean, I've just come here on a motorbike with two layers on top and there's no creases in my T-shirt, which is a really, you know, it's a cool thing to have in a T-shirt that actually doesn't crease very much. Um, and it keeps its shape, it's durable. So, you know, we're not asking people to go buy every week a new T-shirt from us. We want the T-shirt to last. If you follow the care label, this product, this fabric um, has a great memory. It washes very well and you should be able to wear it for years to come if you look after it. We have it in many colors, so you could always buy another one. But, you know, that's part of the, the, the ethos of sustainability. It's not just the, the product and what it's made of, but it means how long it lasts. Because, you know, fashion is so, you know, it's, it's so, it constantly churns out more and more fashion. And so to find staple pieces that we feel represent us, and for me, I, it represents me completely. I mean, I feel very at home in a T-shirt. I wear it every single day of my life. Um, it's part of my uniform, you know, and, uh, and it, it, it's, so it, we're proud of the, of the fact that we have the t-shirt. We also then branched out to create extra pieces to complement the t-shirt, which became the vest. Uh, we have swimwear because, um, I do love the weather. It's part of the reason why <laughs> we live in Portugal, uh, is because we love the sunshine and we like to go swimming and be on a beach or by the pool and, I work very hard and my job takes me away from everything in my life for months on end, shooting in a, a movie and you, you know, when, when, when I finish the job, all I want to do is go where the sun shines. Mm -hmm. And so it made sense to... You chose uh, well. I chose well, yes, I absolutely did. And so we chose to bring, uh, have a, a swimwear part of the, of the collection, which uh, was very exciting to make. Again, made from sustainable fabrics, um, a, a, a product called Econile, which is... Mm -hmm. Um, recycled nylons and a sequel, which is also a, um, it, it's from um, plastics from the from the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we kept the whole thing as sustainable as we possibly can. Um, we're trying our best to do it, uh, do it properly. Right, right. Yeah, I can tell that you guys done all the homework you've you've done, and you're you you spoke so much that it it brings me to a lot of questions. I'll go back to Portugal and you, you guys coming here later on. But I'd like to still discuss a little bit about the origin of the of the brand. And I understand that you have business partners that um, are involved with fashion and design, mm -hmm. not yourself. But it kind of makes me wonder how does an actor get involved into a clothing brand? Because we've heard about models branching into like launching their own lines, mm -hmm. but actors, even though from your answer you speak about the, the references are all from the movies, mm -hmm. like Marlon Brando and James mm -hmm. Dean and all of that. It's, I, I think there's a connection, of course. But for you, how did you get yourself involved in, in doing a fashion brand? It, was it like a business opportunity or was it something that you also had in your mind? It was, um, so as an actor, weirdly, uh, uh, before I did movies, I was in theater and I had no idea about fashion at all. As soon as I started ma doing movies, I would get to go to film premieres and I would uh, get to go to fashion shows and I started to meet lots of the big fashion houses, uh, Mr. Armani, Pier, pa Pier Paolo Piccolo, uh, you know, uh, Maria Grazia, um, Roberta Armani. I mean, I've met 
and Garavani, Valentino Garavani. I've met them all, and I've been rep I've represented them at, sh at at shows. I've I've worn their clothes. I've often been to their design studios, and I've seen and I'm fascinated by it. And my mum is a seamstress. Oh wow! So the sewing machine was always on the kitchen table all my whole life. Still is. I mean, she still fixes trousers for me or a, or even a T-shirt or, or something that I really don't want to throw away, so she'll fix it. I know how to use a sewing machine. So really, as much as I'm an actor, I do have a history of knowing about materials, stitching, fabrics, colors, and all that stuff. So it didn't feel that weird okay. to, to, th to think about creating a brand of my own and not just putting my name to somebody else's work, but putting my name to, the, to, the, to my work to my designs, to our creations, because I knew what I, what I like. I, I know every single piece of this T-shirt, as, as every single piece of the collection, I can talk about everything about it, the technical side of it, the look of it, the weight of it, the feel of it, and how it fits on, on every, every man I've put the, the, the T-shirt on and, and all the other pieces. So it didn't really make, it didn't feel weird to to do this and to, to talk about fashion because I've sort of dabbled in fashion for f 16 years since being in movies. Um, I've also been an ambassador for fashion brands. I've done campaigns of Versace, Police, um, Diesel, D Squared, uh, Black Gold. So, you know, I've always been around it. Yeah, it's intertwined. I yeah. want to ask you, what did your mom say about the collection? Did you show, did you mm. get her, <laughs> she loves it. her approval? She, she <laughs> loves it. She wishes there was more women's pieces, clothing <laughs> pieces, but she'll get them. She'll get them in time because obviously we, I have a, a huge female following and, and, uh, and I know they really would love to be able to buy pieces. So that is definitely something we can do. But um, for now, she has the bag, the towel and the candle to look after. So. But I mean, t-shirts <laughs> are genderless as well. So yeah, she she's not a t-shirt wearer. Yeah, okay. No, she's, she's not. She's ne I've never seen my mom in a t-shirt outside of the house. That's it. But um, my dad loves it. He's all they, they very sweetly went online on the first day and bought some stuff and uh, it got delivered and I have a t-shirt in, in the green tea my, he in the green t-shirt standing next to the fire in the house <laughs> so it's quite sweet and he looks great he looks really good and he's 67 so our market is nice and broad and when our parents are number one fans you're doing something right absolutely yeah. uh why now for the launch is it because of timing it's the the, the time you finished your homework did you did you want it to match the like the the spring summer season because of the the it's a very good line? question um why now well it wasn't it, we had planned to launch at the end of last year and um we, we'd all really sort of got so consumed with the the creating of the developing the brand and thinking about the future and the collection that we'd really f thought hadn't really thought about the fact that the collection really its essence is summer <laughs> so we were like hold on a minute let's just wait we also needed the more time because we were realizing that to do it right you have to give yourself enough time and and the the, the wonderful um added bo bonus of owning the company you means you don't have to answer to anybody. You know, it's my money, I've put the money in, and if I want to wait, then we can, because it's up to me. I'm the only one that's not gonna uh, make any money, but that was okay, because we. I just wanted to do it right. I wanted to make sure that every piece had been curated to its final like place by us, and that we weren't rushing and tripping over ourselves, because you get one chance to create something that you, and you want to be proud of it. You can't pull it back and say, oh, I'm going to try something different. Sorry about that. And we, we gave ourselves enough time. So that's why we launched now. Obviously, it makes sense because, because of the seasons as well. Although nobody in the UK will be buying a, a, a swimwear for quite a while <laughs> because it's still like middle of winter there. But, you know, but everyone travels nowadays. Yes, so, and, yeah. the, and it's summer somewhere in the world, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, we're an international... Uh, brand we can ship to uh, uh, to Asia, to Australia, to uh, Europe, North America, and we're adding a few more Asian countries there: South Korea, Japan, in the next coming weeks. So we can, you know, we're, we're branching out to everybody, everywhere. And for um, sure, there are indoor swimming pools wherever yes, in the world. Exactly. So even exactly. in, in cooler, I want to I want to pick up on the 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 money part you mentioned. You mentioned there's no backup investors. It's all you. That's how much you believe in the in the in the brand. Tell us yeah. about that. About like, making the decision of 
I want to have full control. I want this to be our thing. And yes. Well, you know, the, my first um, my, my my first plan was that we would never we didn't want to splash out huge. We wanted to make a small collection, 12 pieces. It's not huge, but it is staple and it has a clear theme and voice, identity. Um, but we, I wanted to keep it to a certain size and because I, I don't, I, I didn't have millions to spend. And so it's, it's far from that, those big numbers, far from it. And we kept our budgets. We've done all the, the financing ourselves. I've done the financing, but then we've kept it on budget. Fran is a project manager. So he has he is now project managing our business, making sure everybody liaises and making sure that we stick to our budgets. We sometimes went over and then we sometimes came back down. We were able to just keep it yeah. to a yeah. My my bank manager is, sleeps well at night. <laughs> they haven't. They're not panicking, and we're quite proud of the fact that we've kept it to a budget because it can you know if, if yeah. you don't keep control of everything, yeah, things yeah, can yeah. escalate very quickly. So our collections are small. Our 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 quantities are not. Huge, but it goes with the ethos of sustainability. Exactly I mean, right. There wasn't a purpose doing staples and yeah. then doing like 20 or 50, 50 items of clothing for a season probably yeah. wouldn't make sense. We we believe that the pieces that we have made, when people start to wear them and buy them and try them out, we believe they'll come back, mm -hmm. and we want we want our business to grow and and want word of mouth to 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 build and we know that's that's a long process and we're in it for the long term we're not this isn't i hate this word passion project because it's really not a passion project we wanted to create a business that would stand with its own legs with its own name obviously i'm proud to be able to support it and i'm i can talk about every part of the journey and will do because i'm so integrally connected to it but I trust the brand and I think the brand will have its own legs and, and stand uh, stand alone. But right now it needs it's just started learning to walk and so it needs a little guidance and we're there to support it. But um, I think when people try the product, whatever piece of the collection, um, they'll notice that, you know, there's a lot of thought and detail and quality that's gone into it. Even though the brand has its own DNA and you want it to stand on its own, you do have a link to the brand and one of the links one might do is the names, labels you're, you've given the products. Yes. Can you, can you explain a little bit the names yes. you've given the products and, and the story behind it? Yes. So, it you know, everything's sort of connected and inspired by m movies and films. And obviously, I I do movies and films. So that's the first connection. Then we were inspired. The T-shirt came from the old classic Hollywood actors, Marlon Brando, James Dean, all of that. But then we thought, why would we, why sh what about if we name every piece of the collection um, with a name from a film set. Now, if you've never been on a film set, you would not know this, but obviously I have many, many, many movies, and there are very specific, um, unique job names to everybody who works on a film set. You have, and they're quite unusual. They're not normal. It's not like, you know, m manager and um, secretary. It's, mm -hmm. it's like gaffer, best boy, captain, Atmos, the rap, the shutter, you know, the boom, the unit. All these words you don't really hear outside of a film set. But on a film set, it's just very normal conversation to hear, you know, the gaffer and all of that. So those words I just use name all the, the pieces within the, 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 within collection. the collection. And the T-shirt clearly has only one name, the which actor. is the actor. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask just a couple of them. What's an Atmos, a gaffer, a captain on a movie set? So an at Atmos is, um, if it's a big scene and it's outside, um, they sometimes have these guns that smoke okay. and they, they fill, so it's, it's the atmosphere. atmosphere. Okay. So they fill like a smoky street in New York City or, you know, a, um, a, sp a spooky graveyard. You'll see the boys with the Atmos spray and all, the, and, and then they leave and then it all settles and it looks like fog. That's, that's what Atmos is. The gaffer is one of the crew members, okay. and he's, there's there's a head gaffer, and then there's then there's gaffers. But it's so. just it just means a crew member, like crew member. Okay, okay. But quite high up the. the okay, okay, the, the, okay. The rank. Okay. The boom is this thing right above my head. That's the a microphone. Boom. Okay. Usually held by um, by the sound operator, the sound guy. Um, these two are too lazy to hold it, so they've been. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the boom is is uh, is something that usually is 
in my face all all day long and I have to pretend it's not there <laughs> while it's like covered in the furry, you yeah. know. So, so. It's like an animal. Yes. Any animal. But animal. they're so unique and all yeah. these roles, they really get talked about. These yeah. people that make movies, it's not the ones on camera, it's yeah. a l a without the people the behind stage. the camera. Yeah. And I wanted to honor those people because they become very close to us. They're with us all the time. In fact, I'm usually closer to the crew than I am to the actors because I see them every day, you know. Yeah. And, What's um, the captain? In a, in a movie set, a captain. the captain. The captain. Is the director? Is the, no, no. The director is the director, then there's the second AD. The captain is the person who runs unit base. Okay. Also, there's the, the, tra the, the, the transport captain, which is the one we're talking about. And he manages all the, the transport for every single thing on, that moves. Anything on wheels, he's, in, he's the captain of that. So even when we when you when you will expand the collection, there's a lot of jobs. So job many. <laughs> to we already we've already had a brainstorm and we've come up with some genius names yeah. for new products. I have a question about that because when I checked the like for instance the t-shirt is the actor, then there's the the swimming suit is the cam the cameo, and I wanted to ask you matching the job title to the piece is something that you thought of? Yes. Was it fun? Yes, it was. It was actually. Some of them are really, really funny. Like the baseball cap is the focus, which is the focus puller, which is a very important role. But yeah, I mean, the and the underwear is called the unit, which uh, I think is quite um, quite funny. <laughs> and the, 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 the bag is called the shutter. And the towel is the wrap, which is yeah. the end of a day. Wrap, yeah, wrap it up. Uh, you talked about uh, producing most of the collection in Portugal. We've already discussed that, that. But I wanted to ask what came first, the living in Portugal or the factory in Portugal, or are they separate? They, the living came first. Um, yeah, we've uh, had a house here for just over two years. Um, so I guess it was maybe eight months after we moved here that we, we had a house here, then we came and found the manufacturer. So you whilst you were here you you thought you heard about like manufacturing in Portugal and you thought okay since we're here it makes sense to have the collection here as well. You yes, know, but also a lot of the quality the quality um, clothes pieces of clothing that I have um, you look at the label and they're made in Portugal. Um, they really are like the, the front runners of, of, of quality, you know, garments. Um, And so it just made sense. And also because we live here, it was yeah. like, well, why go anywhere else? Yeah. This is a lovely way to connect us, not just having a home, but actually investing in business here and, and, and a local family run business that has survived 50 years, yeah. which I thought was a, a, a lovely thing. And, and, they, and they're, they're great. They're fantastic and, and super supportive. And, um, And it we, makes makes sense not only for the ethos of the brand, but also because you guys are like a family brand. So family brand are. joins family brand. We are all it's all family here. I mean, it's um, you know you choose you choose your family sometimes, and the ones we've chosen um, all believe in us. You know, we we we're not we're not getting paid. We're, you know, we're all doing this um, because we we love it and we've invested all our time and energy and passion into it. Speaking about passion, when did your love affair with Portugal begin? So I've had friends who have been going to the Algarve for decades and um, I'd never been and I'd never been to Lisbon until about four or five years ago. In Moiti, no. <laughs> yeah, no. And then I came for the GQ Portugal <laughs> event, which was five, six years ago, yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably. Um, and that was my... I stayed for a couple of days and I looked around the city and I just I, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the city and then and then yeah, two and a half years ago, uh, uh, I decided you put a ring on it. You made it official. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've not looked back. It's I. It's a very different existence to my London life. Um, the sky is often blue and. <laughs> Uh, I get to ride my little scooter around the city and we discover something new every day we're here. We eat like kings, we drink the best wine. Um, we've met really lovely people. So many people that we've met have, have been kind and they've, they've introduced us to other people. We've connected with lots of interesting people. Um, and we're not far from the beach, so, you know, happy days. Win-win. 
Which words can you say in Portuguese, if any? <laughs> Not many. It's a very difficult language, but I am actually understanding it more and more. But it's um, my ear is struggles sometimes. I mean, obrigado. I know obrigado. I know. That's uh, a good word to know. <laughs> I know that one. Um, what? Bom dia. Bom dia, of course, yes. Um, pastel de nata, no? <laughs> pastel de nata, pastéis de bacalao. Pastéis de bacalao, yeah. Love That's those. Um, al almejoas. Almejoas. Oh, it's my favorite. So, basically, your favorite. vocabulary in Portuguese can say about food. Yeah. It's all about food. <laughs> Duro, wine, yeah. yeah. Um, What's, what do you think is a habit you've picked up or will likely pick up that will make you so Portuguese? <laughs> um, Sunday afternoons at Pr Princessa Ho uh, Beach Club. <laughs> Every time we go, either Saturday or Sunday, we know everybody in the restaurant. It seems to become like the traditional thing, all our friends at least. We go and it's like we've been going there for like 40 years because everybody goes, hi! <laughs> like, it's just this uh, a beautiful little restaurant on the beach and it's been there a very long time and um, the atmosphere is great and we seem to know people every time we go. I do feel very like local when you go sit in a restaurant and people come up and say hi yeah. and you think oh. And that's very Portuguese like going to a restaurant and being like a regular. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what's a Portuguese ha habit that an Englishman like yourself could never develop? Hmm, I don't know. Um, I think I, I don't know anything that we couldn't develop. I mean, for example, I think that on. Portuguese people might not be as punctual as British a British oh. guy. Oh, I don't. I mean, I haven't found. I so haven't found people, that? but maybe that's because I'm becoming less punctual as well. <laughs> I, you know, maybe it's rubbing off. I'm just yeah. becoming more. Uh, that's great to more hear. Portuguese. You know what? You know. We also, I think that we also cross zebras outside of the zebra, you know, crossroads outside of the zebras. Yes. I think we do that a lot. I don't know if Englishmen... We do that all yeah. the time. Yeah, so it's, we it's the, the same. same. We're the same. Yeah, we're breaking the rules yeah, all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to go back to the clothing line and ask you, what do you think people will be most surprised by within the clothing line? Um, well, I don't... I mean, maybe if they know that it's me, they might be surprised at how nice and how good quality it is. <laughs> They're like, maybe what's this actor? He actually knows what he's doing. He actually, he actually has an idea that it's working, you know. But um, I just want people to... I want people to feel it. I want them to try it on. I want them to test it because I think once you... You put it... You put these clothes on, I think you just... You feel that it's not just been thrown together. You know, it's something that's had... Some thought has been put into it. And, um, you know, we've, we try to price it at a good a good price point that you know where we can use these sustainable fabrics and and do it the right way and make something that will last yeah. then that's important to me when i'm buying something you know it may not be the cheapest t-shirt on the market but if it's going to last if it's going to keep its shape around the arms if its neckline's not going to get baggy if it doesn't start to stretch keeps its color um keeps its softness then that's worth Paying for, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. And that's why it's called an investment piece. And if it will last throughout the years, it means that you don't have to keep buying. So yeah. in the end, you're spending the same as if you'd spend in cheaper. That's so absolutely cheaper. right. You know, and and FYI, t-shirts, white t-shirts never go out of fashion. <laughs> and black t-shirts too. And black uh, t-shirts too. All the colors you it's have. It's true. It's true. Which piece do you think is going to be the best seller? And besides the T-shirt, you're going to say yeah, the no, no, no. I mean, sure. the T-shirt obviously is one of our is our hero piece, but um, it's interesting because obviously some of our stuff will be seasonal, so it'll be interesting when summer arrives when people start to look about the swimwear and what they take to the beach. The towel that we have is is beautiful. It's it's really really beautiful. It's it's very very soft, very luxe. Um, we also have a candle, so it's very hard because there's a. It's a lifestyle part of the collection, which, you know, yeah. is I think is the bag will important. be a bestseller. Because I, I love think, the bag. Yeah, because th I think people will be able to wear it a lot throughout the whole year. So. Well, it's a great, it's a great bag. It, it's it's um, in a canvas um, and in its natural color um, with a very sort of 70s homage stripe recycled and nylon uh, straps, handles. Um, it's It is a tote bag, but it's... We've thought about what goes inside, the size of it, you know. Yes. Um, it looks like a weekend bag as well. Like well, we created a zip on the top so that it would be 
appropriate to take traveling if you wanted to go for a long weekend somewhere. And it's huge, by the way. I mean, literally, we can put three towels, two <laughs> bottles of water, all my, all my, all the stuff I need, and it just, it's always, it always works. It's never, it's never too full. I'm glad that you mentioned the seasonal part of the the brand because since it, this is a staple kind of brand, I wanted to ask if there's a permanent collection. How will you balance the staples with the demand of seasonal pieces? Like besides like doing something for winter, mm -hmm. for instance, you have now a set of t-shirts in a multiple color color line. How would you go about when it's winter time? Will you will you do more colors? Will you maintain all these t-shirts throughout the years? Yeah, I think what we what we will do. I mean, we'll keep the staple pieces, our underwear. I think we will we will in, increase the colorways and the t-shirts are absolutely the vests. I'm sure we'll keep, and we'll add colors to those. Um, but I think what it what it comes down to is listening to your customer understanding what people want, what are they buying, what is their feedback. Um, we're open to all of that. We're, we're, we're talking directly to our customers already on, on social media. We listen to them, we talk direct message, we listen to what they say or, or their advice or their compliments or their questions. And we're slowly building up a very clear idea of where we will start to think about our next pieces. It may not be a full collection, it may, we may drop Uh, two or three pieces and maybe two or three colors. We have ideas about what we want to add. Um, and, um, you know, we'll see. I mean... Will suits be ever on the menu? No. <laughs> I'll tell you now, no. <laughs> I, I love wearing a suit, but I think I'll leave that to the tailors and the, and the ones who make those suits. There is a lot of work into a, into a suit and I wouldn't have a clue where to begin. Speaking like the true son of a seamstress. Yes. Because you know how, how oh, difficult yes. it is. <laughs> certainly do. Um, you've mentioned before the brand has three masterminds, yourself, Fran and Christopher, um, that oversee everything. How do you settle these agreements and what has been the most controversial item in the collection? <laughs> well, w weirdly, and this is, I'm not telling a lie, we, we all usually agree on everything. And if we disagree, We, it's never something serious and we usually, when something does, when, or when it's not a collective yes, we talk about why mm -hmm. and we understand each other's um, opinions. But most of the time we migrate independently to the same place, okay. which is a relief. You know, because if you're starting a brand, you really need to be on the same page, but you can't force people to all believe the same idea um, creatively. But we do, we do. We We all have the same vision. We all uh, have the sa we appreciate the same style, stylistic imagery that we've looked at. We, 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 yeah, we always migrate to the same places. Yeah. We have different opinions and different styles and we all throw them into the pot and we look at what, what we like and we're very, there's no, there's no, um, there's no judgment. Yeah. It's and there's a, no, there's no, not one clear winner of the arguments. Is that it? You're no. just like, But we there's don't a argue. compromise. Yeah, we rarely true. argue. Yeah. In fact, the other day I did say to them, because we have a long WhatsApp group, we have several WhatsApp groups, but the one between the three of us, I'm like, are we ever going to have a disagreement? Because it seems like we're all so nice to each other. But it's like, we're nice because we're considering each other. Yeah. We all have the same ethos. We, we know what we want to do and we all support each other. And so, and that's how a good work environment should be, yeah. you know, it's, it's about listening to each other and understanding everybody's points of view. And I think that's where you feel strong and emboldened to say, well, actually, I've got this idea and not to feel too um, nervous about that because you've, you've created an environment which you may not feel comfortable to present something that nobody's thought about. Yeah. We don't have that. We're, we're very open to ideas. And, and that's part of the success of the brand for sure in the future. Uh, where can we find these pieces being sold for now? And where do you plan to have them later on? So uh, right now we are just uh, about two weeks old. We've been online. We have a beautiful website, which is extremely simple and easy to use. Um, it's www.bdxystudio.com. We can ship uh, very quickly to most European countries. We ha are, we're based within the UK, but we have a very quick delivery service. Um, we plan to have it in some selected retail stores within the next 12 months. Okay. Not just in the UK. We plan to place it in places around Europe, uh, North America, and further afield. 
um, those calls, those meetings are happening right now, and that's exciting. But you know, it's interesting because I'm going in as a as a as a pitching my brand, and I'm not ever talking about my movies or what I'm usually used to doing. You know, going into a room, I'm actually pitching a product like my baby, our baby, and we're very proud of it. So, um, I think they're also quite interested when you know I go in. They're going, right, let's watch this car crash, you know, and all of a sudden I'm talking about stuff and I'm to- I understand what I'm talking about because nobody else did it. We did it. We did all the groundwork. We're still doing the groundwork and I'm loving it. It's like a new education. It's like a new, a new, uh, it's going back to school, you know, and, and, and I love that. And it's creation, creativity. It's, it's the juice of life. Yeah, that's great. Uh, congrats, because I, it's, it's lovely to hear you say that and it's lovely to see you having fun with a brand like yes. that. And uh, I'm glad that you're having fun because it must have not been easy to have been balancing your acting career with the business. Tell us how you do it. Well, I couldn't do it on my own, for sure. Um, Fran um, is working full time for the brand and has done for a year and a half. And it's full it's full time. I mean, I, I, if I'm doing a movie, you know, we were in Taipei. I was shooting the last Luc Besson movie there. And I'd go to work at 6 a.m. and Fran would be on the laptop and I'd come home at 9 p.m. and he would still be on the laptop. He would have stopped for some food, had, hadn't even gone to the gym. And so there's a commitment from all of us. You know, I had to go do my day job, but then I'd come home and we would sit and go through designs, ideas, emails, speaking to Europe when we were in tai- Taiwan. And um, we, I, I, we just make it work. I have to say the last three months um, the, from October through to January, I was doing a play in the West End <clears throat> of London. I was the lead. It was a play called Backstairs Billy. It's a huge success. Eight times a week, I was doing this play. And in the daytime, I was at home working on the brand. By January 27th, when we closed the play, I was broken. I was <laughs> absolutely broken. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to go on holidays for a week and uh, just relax. But, you know, you... You, you, you do it, you know, when you commit to something and you, you believe in it, you find energy and you find passion and you find some way through it. When you're tired, you still you know, you keep going. And um, that's business, you know, business isn't easy. And, 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 and building a business from nothing and knowing that you haven't had any financial help means you really all the investment is yours. You're, you're, you, it's up to us to make this work. Steering a bit away from the brand and since you're talking about your day job, let us know about projects you have in the film industry that will make that balance even harder in the coming times. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm just about to fly to Belfast in two weeks to start shooting my next movie with Mila Jovovich, where it's a movie called World Breaker. Um, it's sort of an end of the world apocalyptic monsters taking over the, the world uh, and there's not many humans left. Um, it's a really great character-driven piece, so that's going to be fun. We're shooting that in Belfast. And then um, I have another film which has not been announced, but uh, in July, which is a big, heavy-duty, really heavy-duty, thought-provoking piece um, in Europe. Um, between that and that, that next one, I'm hoping to be here <laughs> and be, enjoy the spring. And, um, and hopefully in the summertime in Portugal as well. Exactly right. Thank you so much, Luke. I don't know if anyone yeah, would. Yeah, I think. Really yeah, good. this interview was amazing. He talked so much. I, I'd continue speaking to him like for hours. He's so good. He's oh, really? So good and so honest. I love it. Yeah. <laughs>